Hello there, everybody, and welcome to Things We Said Today, our weekly uh, podcast slash internet radio show in which we uh, examine all things uh, Beatles, both uh, their uh, their past and, and also what's happening today. Uh, I'm Al Sussman from Beatle Fan Magazine, and I'm here with uh, my three regular co-hosts. Uh, first of all, the uh, the host of the uh, the syndicated uh, Beatles radio show, Every Little Thing, Ken Michaels. Hi, Al. Hi, everybody. How's everyone doing? Great. Terrific. Great, Ken. And also, all the way on the West Coast, we have... Uh, our uh, our resident uh, uh, Beatles journalist, the uh, the reporter for Beatles Examiner and various other Examiner columns at examiner.com, Steve Marinucci. Hey, Al. Hello, everyone. Happy holidays. Happy holidays to you, Steve. And uh, all the way on the other the other side of the country, up in the uh, uncommonly warm climes of Maine. Uh, in the, the, the eastern quadrant, we're having uh, unseasonably warm weather. And in, uh, in Maine, our resident uh, musicologist and longtime contributor to Beatle Fan Magazine, Alan Cozen. Hey, Al. Hello, everyone. And we have uh, uh, our uh, uh, occasional, uh, I don't want to say a special guest, because he's really more than that. He's been uh, uh, an occasional um, uh, co-host uh, during the first uh, several months of this, uh, this particular version of uh, things we said today uh, from the WFUV in New York, uh, Darren DeVivo. Merry Crimble and a very new year to everyone. Mary Crimble to you, Darren. I thought you were going to refer to me as the irregular of things. Yes, we you're, today. You're, yes. <laughs> one, one of uh, one of our two uh, irregulars. irregulars. Yes. Uh, our our other irregular is Tom Frangione, who may possibly pop in uh, at some at some point, which would be appropriate because this show, since this is the last uh, things we said today for uh, for 2015, this is uh, our year end edition. And this is a kind of a tradition that uh, that Ken began back in uh, in the late '80s when he was doing a, a Sunday morning Beatles radio show on on WDHA in Dover, New Jersey. And mm-hmm. uh, in, back in in those days, uh, Tom and I would uh, w- would uh, make the journey to Dover. And uh, and join Ken for um, you know for kind of a wrap up of the uh, of the year, and that's what we're uh, what we're going to try to do today as well. Uh, kind of a, a look back at the the highlights of an interesting uh, an interesting year in the in the Beatle world in 2015. And what we what we've done is each one of us has has come up with a top three. Of either events or releases or just happenings in the Beatle world in 2015, and um, I think to start us off, I think in true non-traditional form, let's let's get the uh, let's get the views of Steve Marinucci. Well, okay, I think, and, and I think I would not be surprised. Well, I'll start with. Uh... Number three. Uh, number three would have to be um, Ringo and Paul touring, and Ringo. Uh, uh, this is kind of a tie. Ringo and Paul touring, and Ringo turning seventy-five. Um, because if you guys remember, if everybody remembers, both Ringo and Paul um, had postponed shows um, last year and this year because of illness. Mm. And so the fact that they were both out on the road, Ringo, a lot closer to his illness than Paul actually but the fact that they were both able to go back out on the road was a very good thing and Ringo turning 75 is just you know you just kind of go good grief I mean the guy never quits Mm. and so I think both of those things need to be you know that at 75 Ringo is still touring as much as he is and actually there's been reports that he's going to be back on the road next year so I mean it's absolutely amazing so good for him Um, so that's number three Number two would be Ringo in the Rock Hall of Fame, finally. Long overdue, um, something that 
you know, that um, really pointed up. And I was just kind of going through, I was talking with some people online about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame uh, yesterday. You know, I mean, uh, we could just sit here and argue about how crazy that whole situation is. But it's good th that he's finally in there. He deserves it. Um, so that's fantastic. It's fantastic that he's there. And then the number one thing has to be, and I know, and I'm sure everybody's going to have this one on their list, and I'd be amazed if you don't, is uh, the One Plus release. Um, something that has, you know, that we all, that I know I was w been wishing for. It's been at the top of my wish list, and they finally came through. Uh, I love the way they, they did the little, uh, they clued us all in with the little uh, countdown, and, and the result was just fantastic. And, um, you know, so that's great. Uh, I mean, that has to be number one. As far as honorable mentions, I actually had a, a, a bunch of other things uh, that I was going to uh, list. I don't know if you'd call this a highlight, but McCartney's Kanye West uh, collaborations that got so much attention, I think that probably needs to be mentioned. But also, I'm going to say something, I'm going to be a little self serving and say that this year also marks the 20th anniversary of the founding of Abbey Road's Beetle Page. And <laughs> hey. so I'm, and actually that was just uh, last week. And so I have to, I have to mention that too. So there you go. I mean, there's so many things that happened this year, you know, Cynthia Lennon's passing, I think uh, is a uh, big, but um, the Abbey Road thing, I, I could, I'm, I'm actually putting something together that I'm going to post online. Um, but um I was been thinking back on that and there's a whole bunch of there's I mean that was just you know so many things happened in, in there that um made my that uh, were big uh, for me but anyway there we go Can I play devil's advocate mm. for a moment? Yes you can. Just uh, since the number your number 3 selection there are there are people who basically would say that Paul and Ringo touring really is not that big a deal anymore because, I mean, Paul is practically on the, you know, the Dylan uh, scale of the of a tour that never ends. And, mm -hmm. and Ringo pretty much tours with the All-Star Band just about every year, as you just mentioned, where it's, it's all but official that he's going to be touring again in 2016. So well, why would that be significant? Because, as I said, they both canceled tours because of illness and they were, they were both, uh, and at their age, Paul's was extremely serious. I mean, they were both serious. Paul's was, you know, rumored to be, you know, I mean, there were some crazy rumors that went around when Paul canceled his and Ringo of course was, uh, was nothing more, fortunately nothing more than, I think it was pneumonia, but I mean, it, you know, at his age, that's nothing to, to, to play around with. So mm -hmm. the fact that they were, they both had to cancel tours at their ages. And I, I want to underline, really, it's the, it's the age thing that comes into view here, that comes, that, that comes into play. I mean, normally, you're right. Normally, the fact that they were touring would not be a big deal. But the fact that they had to cancel tours because of uh, their health and that they came back and they were able to do it, again, do it and do a lot of it, I think is, is, pretty significant so that's where that's where the logic in that comes from mm -hmm. mm. can i add something please oh. to me and that's one of my honorable mentions it's just something that i never take for granted anymore mm -hmm. i mean we're we're very spoiled living in the united states where paul almost always does dates every year when he does when he does tour and Ringo tours almost every single year now, and he loves this current lineup, which apparently he's still going to keep. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the older and older they get, the more you have to be grateful that they're doing anything, right? And the health, <laughs> let alone touring. And the health, yeah. the health thing becomes very significant now. Uh, you have to, you know, whether or not we want to, you know, uh, whether or not we want to acknowledge that or not, we have, I mean, I think we do. Um, these guys are not young. I mean, even... You know, I mean, you could you could say 50s and 60s, you know, in their 50s and 60s, um, you know, you could make the comment and it wouldn't be that big a deal. But they're both over 70 and not too many. There aren't too many artists going out and doing the kind of touring they do at their age. So I think 
you know, I, I, I don't have any regrets about saying that at all. Um, so there you go. Although to be not only that, yeah, I, was, I just wanted to say mm-hmm. not only that, but uh, Ringo's on stage for two hours. Paul's on stage for two and a half to three hours. Mm-hmm. Unless you're doing that on a regular basis, you have no idea what kind of toll that takes on oh, the body. Sure. <laughs> and so to be in their 70s doing this, yeah, it's pretty remarkable. And Paul you know? and Paul's show, as you as you mentioned, I mean, is is I mean, he doesn't uh, Ringo takes breaks during his Paul doesn't really. And that's really what, you know, I mean, that's to be mentioned, too. I mean, but, uh, yeah, I mean, you have to give these guys both a lot of credit for keeping it up. And and one other thing that just comes to mind is the fact that God, I don't know how they do it, but the Beatles still make news almost every damn day. And I don't talk about not just the stuff that I write. I'm talking about, you know, there's just something going on almost all the time. And it's just crazy. But you got to give them credit. They're they're doing it. Anyway, I'll shut up. <laughs> it's crazy good. Yes, it is. It mm-hmm. is. Ken, how about you? What are your selections? Okay, well, my top three was were pretty obvious for me because I always uh, put music releases above everything in most cases. Number three would be Ringo's album, Postcards from Paradise. I love the fact that he's still keeping at it. And usually every couple of years now he has a new album out. And this album in many ways is similar to his more recent ones. And he's collaborating with some of the same people. But as I said before on the show, I love the fact that I think that he's blossomed as a songwriter and working with all the different people from Dave Stewart to Richard Marks to Todd Rundgren, doing one song with all the all-stars, collaborating on that. Van Dyke Parks, I love when he writes with him. I love all the the songs that he's writing now, and uh, when you see growth in him, again at his age, you know he's seventy five now. Um, to me, I I just um, I marvel at that, you know, and the fact that when he does talk about his new music or his activities, he's still excited. <laughs> he loves doing this, you know. He realized a while ago this is his dream to live life as a musician. Mm-hmm. And that's what he's doing. So. He did say he's about to start recording another new album in January. Oh, so wow. I just I just give him, you know, all the more credit for that. Here, here. Um, second would have to be the remasters from Paul for a Tug of War and Pipes of Peace. I think they were very well done. Um, the sound quality is amazing. I like the bonus tracks that were on there. Although, as I've said with just about every single reissue from McCartney, I wish there was a lot more video. Um, and a little bit more audio, and I would would have been, you know, thrilled, thrilled to pieces if there was more of that. I always love the books that come with the the remastered for the for the uh, deluxe editions with all the Linda McCartney photos, many of which we've never seen before. And there was a lot of you know backstories uh, behind the songs and the sessions for both uh, Tug of War and Pipes of Peace. Information about the video for Pipes of Peace, which to me is one of the best of all of Paul's videos. You know, two albums there, both produced by George Martin, very well produced. Tug of War, to me, is one of his finest, and I think a great job was done on both of those. And number one would have to be the Beatles One Plus. In part, I I must say, because it was a surprise (laughs) to all of us. I don't think anyone expected this to come out, even though it seemed like the most natural thing in the world for a video collection to come out on the Beatles. It's never really ever been discussed as a potential release as far as i can remember so it made a lot of sense and we were talking about this uh prior to the release of the beatles one plus that when the beatles one first came out it would have been so perfect a year later well here's the videos Mm -hmm. but it's it took 15 years for that to happen and to get these videos out the way that they were put out in the best possible quality um and then to have the bonus disc of another 23 videos for the b-sides and alternate takes and to also add all the videos for songs for which there were no videos to accompany that you know a lot of work was put behind this so it's not just the fact that it's the beatles one and and the songs being remixed to and uh, and the videos but the fact that it was done right and um i love the booklet that comes with it has information about all the videos and, um, you know, it was just a job well done, you know, for all the criticism that a lot of fans, Beatle fans have. And sometimes Beatle fans are super picky. <laughs> no, <laughs> super no, 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 no way. <laughs> yourself. Uh, 
I can't I can't imagine too many people being being upset about this. Um, I think that it was just done right, you know, and I think for that reason alone, um, you know, it deserves to be the number one release or event for the year for Beatle fans. But I do have a few honorable mentions that I just want to want to bring up very quickly. Sure. Ringo getting inducted into the Rock Hall of Fame, which we did a whole show on that with Darren, yep. by the way. Um, Ringo's auction, which just happened uh, a few weeks ago. I'm not a big memorabilia guy, but um, 1,300 items all at once. And uh, so many of them tied to the Beatles. A lot of it was artwork that Ringo collected through the years or was given. A lot of stuff that was gifted to him. It's just uh, incredible that he put all this up for auction and uh, all for charity. And, um, you know, if you just looked at the list, your jaw should have dropped. Uh, just to see all the stuff he was giving away. I don't know how anyone could bypass that. It was a, 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 you know, whether you're into memorabilia or not, just to look at all the stuff that he was giving away all at once, that was just amazing. Ringo's book, Photograph, being released to the mass market, and I think that was a really good book because of all the photos in it, most of which we hadn't seen from the Beatle years, and surprisingly, quite a lot from his days with Rory Storm. You know, so, you know there's, there's so little that's out there on Rory Storm, and to have all these photos in there, I thought that was a real treat. Um, like Steve said, and I was just thinking that there's probably going to be a debate about this, but uh, not only the collaboration with Kanye West, but the success of 4 or 5 Seconds, which went all the way to number 4 in America on Billboard's Hot 100, and that song actually made number one in several countries mm -hmm. around the world and top 10 in many countries around the world. And when I looked on YouTube, I saw that the video for that had over 411 million hits. You cannot deny the success of that record, which turned out to be Paul's first top 10 hit since Spies Like Us in the United States. And that's 30 years ago. So um, it also got yeah, him on the that, that it was, also got him on the Grammy Awards too because they they performed it. So that's true, and now Paul is up for two Grammys for uh, you know rap <laughs> mm -hmm. for the single for All Day, which was the third single mm -hmm. from uh, the collaboration there with Kanye. But yeah, yeah, I mean, how can you deny how big that record was? Um, also, I do want to mention the recent tribute concerts, the one for John Lennon at Madison Square Garden, which I just watched on AMC, which I was uh, pretty impressed with. There's some really good covers there of John's material, especially the solo stuff. And I don't know if you guys caught the, uh, the concert. I know Tom, Tom Fran Joan went to it, but uh, there was a tremendous performance of Steel and Glass, which you got to watch from Aloe Black, who has an, an incredible voice. But uh, a lot of great covers in that concert, as well as the Ringo tribute, the David Lynch Lifetime Peace and Love Award. Mm -hmm. There's some really cool covers on there. And mm -hmm. Steve had written about it. And um, you should really check out Betty LeVette doing a Don't Come Easy. And also some songs that um, are not commonly known. Don't Go Where the Road Don't Go, which mm -hmm. I know was you know, big for Ringo in concert. But that song got covered by Brandon Flowers. And um, Ben Folds did Oh My My really raucous version of that i think and um can't get it wrong was covered as well so it's not just the typical stuff from ringo so uh two really good tribute concerts right there to check out the one on john and the one on ringo so all those things i think made 2015 a pretty exciting year now let me just to backtrack to four or five seconds and all day um uh -huh. uh, but the success of four or five seconds Again, the play devil's advocate, wouldn't mm -hmm. you have to concede that the, you know, that the credit for the success of, of that song is largely the fact that it's Rihanna and Kanye West and that Paul was just kind of along for the ride? Well, I suppose so. Yeah. But the fact <clears throat> of the matter is Paul's name is on the record, Yeah, you know, and he was part of the collaboration. You know, it just seemed to be a jam that they worked on together. And however it came about, that's what happened. Mm -hmm. And the three of them agreed that Paul's name would be on the record. So however he had a hit, that's how it was. Mm -hmm. You know, I kind of equate this with when David Bowie had success with fame. Mm -hmm. And John co-wrote the song uh, along with, um, with David and with Carlos Alomar. And he played guitar on it and he sang backing vocals. 
his name wasn't given uh, a credit as an artist credit with with David Bowie, but it's it's a side project that's a part of his catalog. Mm -hmm. You know, it's to me, you know, it's it's all part of who what John was. You know, no different than when he teamed up with Elton John on Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. You know, this is another collaboration, and in this particular case, Paul's name was on the artist credit, which is why he got a top ten hit in America. Mm -hmm. But you know, I, I say I'm happy about the success of it. I thought it was a really good record. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed that particular one. I wasn't crazy about the rap ones, but then I'm not a big rap guy. Right. So, um, and I do like uh, the first single, Only One, a lot. But four or five seconds when I heard that, I couldn't imagine it not being a hit. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, speaking of, of uh, devotees of rap, let's hear uh, what, the, <laughs> what Darren DeVivo has to, uh, <laughs> has to contribute for his choices for the year. Yo, 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 it's my turn. And my top three pretty much mirror what everyone else was going to say, what everyone else has said for the most part. Number number three for me would uh, probably, be, you know, I have a three, I can't, I guess number three would be Ringo's new album, Postcards from Paradise, uh, just nosing out the reissues of uh, Paul's albums. Uh, so I would say the Ringo album, Postcards from Paradise, uh, would be my number three. I really like what Ken had to say. Uh, I, I think it says a lot for uh, the fact that at this point in his career, and Steve also bringing out very valid points about his how active he is, Ringo, at his age. And I'm thrilled to hear, because I had not heard any talk yet about 2016. Uh, I envisioned it maybe being more of a... Uh, a year off for Ringo, but I'm thrilled at the potential for another tour and that Ringo is already thinking about another album. You look at so many veteran acts and a few names come to mind, like the Moody Blues, for example. Uh, there are so many veteran acts who live on the road, not just Paul and Ringo, but the difference is a lot of these acts have pretty much stopped making music. And that sort of bugs me. I interviewed Justin Hayward a couple of years ago, and uh, I just got the impression from him that the band, the Moody Blues, aren't particularly interested in making music anymore. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that struck me as odd, especially since a year later, John Lodge does a solo album, uh, <laughs> which came out this year. But I, I love the fact that Ringo is still making new music. And he's doing it. He was always like the underdog. He was always the uh, uh, he was never going to have uh, mass sales. Uh, a few instances he did. But for the most part, you know, uh, his audience, his core audience that's buying the new music is small. But that doesn't stop him. So I think that's pushes uh, uh, postcards from paradise into into my number three over the reissues. Number two would be Ringo going into the Hall of Fame. I think my complaint back when we talked about this earlier in the year on this show was that I felt Ringo's induction was a little bit of a consolation prize. Now, I don't recall the category that Ringo went in as and what I feel he should have gone in as, you know, what the technical categories are. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what was Ringo? Not Sideman. He went in as, uh, as more of a, uh, an instrumentalist than a performer. <laughs> per se mm -hmm. it was what yeah i forget what the what they call it now but it's what used to be the sideman award see and i felt ringo should be in the rock and roll hall of fame period yeah you know what i'm saying not this secondary category which most people don't really make that big of a deal out of it they're just happy ringo's in and mm -hmm. i am but it, that was a little bit of the damper uh for me was that he wasn't getting you know, uh, an equal shake. Uh, but that's kind of nitpicking on my part. Still, I was thrilled he finally got in. And uh, so that would be number two for me. Darren, uh, if so, I can interrupt for a sec, he was given the award for musical ex excellence. That was the that was the exact title of what he was inducted okay. as. As opposed to somebody who goes in like, uh, like McCartney went in as a solo artist as... What would you know that 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 to me seemed like the top tier induction level, 
uh, for lack of a better mm-hmm. way of putting it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, oh, yes. yes. Okay. So, uh, but in, in any, any event, all the details and the <laughs> Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, as we know, is flawed beyond uh, words. So mm-hmm. uh, just happy that he gets in. So Ringo going in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is number two. His new album is three, and uh, which I thought it was a really solid, solid album. And uh, just to backtrack to number three, uh, uh, again, it was one of my legitimately one of my fifth favorite albums of the year. My top 15 album list. I had no no issues with including it in there in the top 15. It wasn't a case where it was just because it was Ringo. I included it. I really enjoyed it uh, enough to put it in my top 15. And I was thrilled to see that ultimate classic rock website. In their top 20 albums of the year, I think they had Ringo's album at number 19. Wow. Uh, so, and did not have. That's great. Yep, yep. The number one album of the year was the Billy Gibbons solo album uh, mm-hmm. from ZZ Top. But see Ringo make the top 20, I felt like, great. Someone else is paying attention. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Number one is obviously one. Um, like Ken, I was also caught off guard. I didn't see it coming. Although I figured that eventually of some sort of video anthology has to happen. Uh, the only complaint I had of it, and it's, it's, you know, and this comes from, you know, the, me being the, uh, the radio DJ, having to actually, in a nutshell, describe the release. There was no way to do it easily. <laughs> you know, uh-huh. what is it? Well, it's, it's not just a Blu-ray of the Beatle videos. <laughs> it's it's the Blu-ray, it's the DVD, but the album's involved as well, and it's been remixed. And don't forget, my friends, there's one plus. This is different than one. It got very <laughs> very complicated to try to explain exactly what it was. And even when I went to buy it, I was uh, a little. When I saw all the configurations in front of me, was a little, uh, huh? Okay, uh-huh. I could grab one of everything and just call it, you know. But uh, it, it's just a treasure trove, you know. It, there's nothing other than that, that little silly nitpicking thing. Other than that, there's nothing to complain about really there. And uh, that has to be one is one in my book. Since you weren't here uh, when we discussed uh, one, one plus uh, a few weeks back, uh, how did you feel about the remixing of uh, the tracks on the, the basic, on the audio disc? Normally, I would be against it, I think, because um, it opens up, a, you know, it opens up a new door to hear things a little differently. Mm-hmm. And I welcome that uh, under normal circumstances. I'm not usually interested in that. I want things as... Uh, you know, I want things as they were originally. You know, I wasn't thrilled with, you know, some of the later Lennon reissues that Yoko was behind, you know, when there was starting to become noticeable differences in the mix. Uh-huh. But I thought for this instance, the way it was presented, if you have an issue with it, then listen to the original version of one or even the repackaging that they did in 09 or 10 you know, go back to the original. That still sounds damn good. You know, but for something a little different and for that curveball when you're wearing your headphones, you know, I enjoyed the the uh, the remixes, which is, uh, again, not something I, I, I normally don't like when that's done. How did you feel about the remixes, particularly um, on the second video disc of uh, Free as a Bird and Real Love? I got to be honest with you, I haven't had the time I would have liked to have had to really sink my teeth into the second disc. Uh-huh. So I actually reserve opinion. I don't really have one yet. Uh, you know, I just haven't. Um, I don't know. I think it's just uh, the craziness of life. I haven't had the opportunity to really dedicate a lot of time to, you know, that second disc. I think I've gone through it once and even then not quite as closely as I would have liked. You know, now with the holidays upon us, I usually take a little time off to, you know, catch my breath at the end of the year. And um, I've got a whole like list of things that I want to listen to and watch and do and spending a little quality time really dissecting the packaging, you know, uh, and uh, is something I'm looking forward to. So I don't really have an opinion yet for, uh, you know, the, the remixes of those two songs. 
I see. Okay. And how about Alan? Okay. Well, for me, obviously, the big event of the year was Apple's incredible release of the 50th anniversary of the Shea Stadium concert on Blu-ray with a great stereo <laughs> mix. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yep. But for this year's list, <laughs> uh, okay, I, I didn't really think of them as one, two, and three. Um, so maybe I should get one out of the way just by saying that one is, of course, one and one plus like everybody else. And um, I went on at great length about it during the show that we did. So mm -hmm. um, suffice to say that. Um, I do think that the remixes on it were really one of the most significant aspects of it. And I think that they showed uh, that by going back to the source material before the, uh, the mix downs and the, and the interim mix downs that, that happened along the way in the creation of these tracks, um, that you could get an incredible kind of, you know, quality and, and, and sense of realness of the instruments and voices that um, you're not able to do with just a really good mastering of, of the existing stereo mixes. Um, and also there were some improvements, um, you know, where they sort of went for the feel of the mono mix, but in stereo. So having said, I wouldn't say anything about it. That, that's that. Uh, the second thing um, is the release of Chip Manninger and Scott Riley's Leninology. Lots and lots of good Beatles books come out these days, and there's getting to be a, a really big, good library of Beatles research materials, and this is another addition to it, and I think an important one. Um, not as important, I think, as it's going to be once the further volumes come out and tell us more about how the the tracks were recorded and giving us the, the dates and specifics. I mean, the, this first volume is uh, – fundamentally a John Lennon biography in the form of, or creative biography in the form of a sort of diary, sort of giving us a day by day uh, from, you know, it, is, it starts before 68, actually starts in 66, I guess, mm -hmm. you know, all the way through um, with lots of quoted material, lots of, uh, you know, good references. Uh, his, his um, source list is, you know, perhaps unusually for now, but I think we're going to see this more and more um, available only online mm -hmm. uh, rather than in the printed book, um, which is something to get used to. But uh, but the book is, you know, it's a great read, you know, even as a diary, you would think a diary might be a little choppy, but, you know, it it, it just proceeds right through John's career and it's a really good read and important. Uh, the third thing uh, I thought was the remix of Tug of War. First of all, I thought it just sounded a bit better than the standard mix. Not that the standard mix sounds so bad, but I thought that it uh, it made it a bit more present, a, a bit a bit fresher sounding. Um, but also, I think the remix of Tug of War, like the remix of One, showed an openness in the Beatles world to the concept of remixing things. I mean, they're not remixed radically. It's not like they're going to be new, totally new tracks that you never heard before. Uh, you know, it, it's just that it freshens them up. It, it takes advantage of current technology. And uh, in in both cases, the original mixes are still available to you. And in fact, in the in the tug of war remix, it was packaged with the original mix, uh, a mm -hmm. remaster of it. So I thought that was very well done. And I thought that packaging both of the mixes together was a good idea. Uh, and I'd like to see I'd, I'd I'd like to see more revisiting of these old catalogs with a sense of what can be done technologically to maybe make them a bit more like the way it sounded in the room or what they envisioned but didn't quite get because of the limitations of technology at the time. I know that's a dangerous concept, but I've liked what I've heard so far, and so I think it's something that they should continue exploring. Um, individually and together. Alan, I, th I think that it's actually, um, they've actually turned the corner a little bit because if you 
I, I, if you recall, and um, you know, there was a time where they wouldn't do anything. They were scared to death to change anything. Um, the, I mean, remember back when the first CDs came out, they were, you know, they were nervous ab- about, you know, putting these things on CD, you know, and messing with any mixes. And for a long time, you know, they would rather, you know, put out crummy mixes than uh, old mixes than put out, you know, than fix them up. So I think mm-hmm. we've. I think it's going to happen a lot more now. I, um, and, and I think we're a bit much better for it, but, um, yeah, I agree. Yeah. For in the early day, I, rem- I remember very well in the early days of CDs that uh, a lot of the releases that came out were basically just simply using production masters from the LPs, mm-hmm. you know, and just putting them, putting them out digitally and they were, and they were awful. You know, not totally, but a lot of them were. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, with, I mean, mm-hmm. look what they've done with one. I mean, one, this is yeah. the third yeah. incarnation of one. I mean, that, that in itself, so, I mean, we know that they treasure one. One's a big part of their, you know, the catalog. I mean, it's a major, you know, it's a major release. Um, but they've, they really care so much about one. They've put out three versions now. I mean, that's, God only knows how soon we'll get another one, but I wouldn't. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be <laughs> all that surprising if it if it doesn't happen. You know, relative. I mean, it happens relatively soon. You know, mm. probably not that soon, but I mean, uh, I mean, look at how open. I mean, that's it's kind of crazy that they've already got three versions of this thing already. So, I don't know. This also makes me wonder what Paul McCartney might do with the rest of his solo catalog i mean would he remix any of his other albums and if if he did that then the earlier ones that he put out he didn't remix right some fans might say well you didn't remix ram <laughs> you know it's true so what do you do there so well i'm sure he'd be happy to sell us ram again if volume two <laughs> how many quiet, times quiet. has it been <laughs> quiet quiet don't 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 give him any ideas please <laughs> um, why not so I had actually a couple of um, runners up too, and they're both sort of personal in a way. I mean, one is up here in Portland, they have had for the last 12 years a Beatles night, uh, which was, you know, just sort of a big cover show, typically on the weekend after Thanksgiving. And so this is the first year I've been living here, so I went to it. And um, it was it's run by a, a local musician named Spencer Albee, who's a keyboardist, guitarist, singer. And he put together a band uh, with, uh, I guess, a lot of other local players. They didn't have a program, so they didn't get most of the names. But among other things, I mean, they, they did a really good show that included a complete cover of the Abbey Road album, um, start to finish. And it wasn't a slavish you know, cover version, but it was very close to what the Beatles did. I mean, and they brought in strings and brass and all kinds of things. Um, And in a particularly Portland touch, Portland being a fairly progressive city for um, LGBT kind of things, um, something was sung by a female singer who did not change the gender of, of the lyrics. Um, but so altogether, I mean, it was, it was just incredibly done. I was, you know, I'm not always that impressed by cover bands and, and everything, but, uh, it was a really good show. And the second thing I wanted to mention is a, a sort of honorable mention is, um, you know, uh, Paul McCartney in his shows often, uh, I guess every show at this point will get someone on stage and autograph something or shoulder or whatever. And, mm-hmm. um, and this year, um, uh, a, a pal of all of us, Rick yes. Love, got mm. onto stage mm. and, you know, Rick has, first of all, you know, with his fans on the run, um, has seen 80 gazillion Paul McCartney shows. I think he's seen more M- McCartney shows than McCartney's played. <laughs> um, and uh, so he got up on stage this time. And in addition, this year, apparently beat cancer. Yes. So um, so let's hear it for Rick. You yeah, know? absolutely. And a guest on nice. the show too. Yeah. So, yes. Okay. And actually, it should be mentioned that McCartney just put out a best of 2015 video yesterday, and Rick is at and the Rick end of it. Rick is in it, yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So yeah. those are mine. Um, you know, a lot of other things that other people have mentioned in 
you know, is either their their three or the honorable mentions or you know would be on my list too. So I, I don't by not mentioning those, I don't mean to say that, you know I didn't consider them worthy. I just I figured I'd go elsewhere. So that leaves you, Al. I guess so. Yeah, and uh, uh, my selections are not all that different, as you might expect, uh, because uh, number one. Uh, obviously, is the you know the big Beetle World event of the year was the release of the one slash one plus package or various packages. Uh, it, obviously, uh, we've been waiting for a you know a, a collection of Beatles videos for a very long time. In fact, well before the release of the original one, uh, you know audio audio album in, in uh, 2000, it, you know, because it seemed to be the most, the most obvious thing in the world when you consider that acts like the, the Rolling Stones and Elton John and the Who had released compilations of their, of their videos during the 80s. And, but that's, you know, Apple works in mysterious ways, plus the fact that they you know, they're dependent on the unanimous decision of the four directors. So, uh, so it certainly was a a long wait, but it was, it was, uh, very much worth it. The, uh, the, the audio disc of the, uh, of the one album is, uh, is an absolute delight. And the, 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 the remixes, uh, are, you know, not at all, you know, they they can't be. I, I wouldn't say that any of them are disturbing, except to you know, uh, uh, you know, hardcore traditionalists who feel that you you know you're putting a mustache on the Mona Lisa. But uh, no, I think they're they're actually very very positive, and the uh, the videos on the two DVDs uh, or Blu-rays, if you will, uh, are uh, are are outstanding. You know, even the the sixty five black and white videos are very very interesting, and they're they're in super super quality. So obviously that has to be the 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 big story of the year. Uh, number two would be also the uh, the the reissues of Tug of War and Pice of Peace. You know, which continues a uh, you know a tradition of uh, of fine archive releases. Uh, that Paul McCartney has uh, has undertaken in, within the last uh, the, the last several years, the the you know the sound uh, as as Alan uh, indicated the uh, the remixing, of, particularly of Tug of War, it was done very very well and uh, and as always uh, uh, you know as Ken mentioned that's the you know the only the only uh, kind of uh, negative. On any uh, of the almost any of the the McCartney archive packages has been the uh, the the shall we say the chintziness of the of the of the material doled out on the on the DVDs and perhaps right. even even some of the audio material where you know there's not really that much. Uh, that that actually has been you know been released when you consider the the volumes of material that uh, that are in the McCartney uh, the McCartney archives that have still not seen the light of uh, at least official release. Uh, but the, the the two packages were you know again were uh, very very well done and. Um, you know, it bodes well for the continuation of the series in uh, in 2016. With uh, apparently, "Flowers in the Dirt" is going to be the next uh, the next release in the series, and uh, which is and that should be very interesting since that's one of the the more recent, even though it's now well over 25 years ago uh, that "Flowers in the Dirt" came out. But it still is considered one of the more recent releases, so one would wonder just how much uh, can really be done with an album like that. Although, obviously, with the supplemental material, there's a lot, so we shall see. But certainly the release of, uh, of Tug of War and Pipes of Peace is a major 
uh, a major event. R uh, Ringo, uh, I'll, I'll as an entry, I'll I'll include both his uh, his release, Postcards from Paradise, and his induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Uh, obviously, in the case of um, uh, his induction into the Hall of Fame, it's uh, you know even though it's somewhat you know in the back door, and that he's not a full uh, a full fledged member. Uh, still, it's uh, it's you know obviously about time that he was inducted. Can you know when you consider the the influence that Ringo has had over an entire generation of, of drummers. And of course, obviously, it means that all four Beatles are in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, not only as uh, as the Beatles, but also as uh, as individuals. And uh, Postcards from Paradise, you know, um, as you know, as has been the case over the last uh, couple of decades, it was not a uh, not a big seller, but it's a you know a, a very pleasant album. Um, as uh, I think it was Ken said, it's kind of in the tradition of the uh, the albums he's done in the post, shall we say, the post Mark Hudson era, uh, where he's mm -hmm. been uh, basically recording most of his albums in you know basically at home using Pro Tools and and other uh, other recording devices. But it's uh, you know uh, uh, you know a very pleasant. It's uh, you know not certainly not in the pantheon. Of, of Ringo albums, at least I don't, I don't think so. But uh, but it's certainly a pleasant enough album, and it's a, a nice a nice addition uh, to his catalog. There is uh, and uh, sort of an honorable mention uh, goes to an album of of largely cover versions. Uh, and you know, obviously, there are a lot of groups out there. You know, uh, you know, given the uh, the number of uh, f of festivals, uh, things like Abbey Road on the River, that are you know basically made up of nothing but Beatles tribute bands. You know, there are, and 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 a lot of them record as well. But what there was an album that came out during the year uh, by a group called the Weaklings. And mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, Glenn, Be uh, Glenn Burtnick, who is a member of of the Weaklings, as well as a uh, something of a rock and roll uh, legend in, uh, in, in certainly in New Jersey, was one of our guests during the year. And uh, it's it's and as is uh, John Marjavi, uh, who is who is also a member of the Weaklings and is also a member of Liverpool. Who is the uh, the house band at the Fest for Beatles fans, and uh, it's uh, the album is kind of split between cover versions of the songs the Beatles gave away, and some originals which are very Beatlesque, which is a which is a show we should probably do sometime. Speaking of shows that uh, go back to to Ken's uh, Ken's days in uh, on WDHA. Um, yeah. Uh but it's uh if if you want a you know a real pleasant listen to uh to an album of uh you know just excellent excellent pop music uh with obviously the uh you know the the influence the influence of the Beatles the Weaklings album is uh, is well worth your time absolutely. Uh there's one other thing that I wanted to get into because we, um, as you as you probably noticed, most of us had roughly the same nominations for most of the uh, for most of our most of our selections for the 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 top Beatle World events of 2015, and that that is that it it was very interesting that in a year where um, uh, the 75th anniversary. Of John Lennon's birth, and coincidentally, the 35th anniversary of his death, as well. In that year, in this particular year, the only release from the what you might call the Lennon camp uh, was a was a um, a set of a release of John Lennon's LPs, his solo, his post Beatles LPs. Nothing else. 
and uh, and that uh, you know that unfortunately uh, that's a, a reality that uh, that I think we uh, were we're having to deal with more and more because you know let's face it to, you know to be blunt about it John Lennon and George Harrison are dead and they've both been so for a goodly amount of time and um, and so there's as as time goes on, there obviously now now we know that there there is archive material that uh, from from George Harrison that has not been that has not been released. For instance, the film of uh, uh, from his 1974 concert tour, and also uh, outtakes that uh, he had designated. For eventual release before before his passing, but the fact is that you know as as more time goes on, there is less and less in the archives, and so uh, we're really going to have to deal with uh, the fact that in most years, unless there's a you know a Beatles group uh, release of some kind, as as was the case this year. Uh, really, the the story of the of the the Beatle year is almost inevitably going to be Paul and Ringo, and uh, that's um, it's you know it's a it's a sobering thought, but uh, in a sense, uh, John Lennon and George Harrison are are kind of fading into history in terms of their you know their their ongoing uh, ongoing releases. And and their you know and their ongoing legacy. I really should say that. Really, their their ongoing musical legacy. And well, that's that's very that's a very complicated uh, topic to yeah. get into, and that really should be an entire mm-hmm. show. But you know, as far as I'm concerned, for those of us who are familiar with what's been released on bootleg and and certainly in the case of John, what was aired on the Lost Lennon tapes. As far as I'm concerned, there's a lot of other material that could come out. It's just a question of whether or not Yoko, or when the time comes when Yoko passes mm. on, if Sean and Julian take over, however it's handled, if they think that it's worth releasing. You know, that's that really is a whole other matter. And in the case of George, I always remember that quote from George when he was interviewed by Timothy White and Billboard. I think it was when the Yellow Submarine song track came out. He said that he has more unreleased stuff than Jim right. Reeves. <laughs> you know, there could be. I don't know if he was exaggerating or not, but um, I'm envisioning lots of early take albums, although it's been yeah, a while that's it. <laughs> since the first one. So it all depends upon because Danny apparently is in charge mm-hmm. of that. So it's whenever he wants to really work on that. And as he has said, he wants to be he, he wants to, um, you know, put out just the best quality that he can on his father and not just put out anything. Mm-hmm. So that means combing through the archives, finding out what they think is the best material. And, you know, that all comes down to when when Danny has time to do that. And what they feel is the best material, what's worth coming out. So I wouldn't say that there's nothing left or very little left. It all depends upon the families. And also, let's face it, whether or not the record company <laughs> feels that it's worth putting mm. out. You know. So I've been lamenting, why hasn't there been another John Lennon anthology mm. box set? That four CD set was wonderful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I could, I could take another four sure. CD set. But there hasn't been one since then. And when you're aware of certainly the Lost Lennon Tapes material. And then we were just talking about remixes. Mm-hmm. You know, why don't they? They could remix George's solo catalog. And, um, you know, Darren was just saying he wasn't crazy about some of the, the remixes that Yoko did in the 2000s of John's catalog. You could do that with George's catalog. There's no telling what you can do with a catalog. Mm-hmm. It all depends upon... The family and and whether or not the record company is interested, you know, they I'm sure they're thinking there's only so much demand for this. What would be worth their while in putting mm-hmm. out? I think the record company it is irrelevant sense. in these these days, you know, because yeah, yeah really? because basically, look, people people are circumventing record companies right and left and just mm-hmm. putting out whatever they want on their own on their own imprint yeah. or 
digital mm-hmm. only or whatever. So I don't, I don't think um, any of the former Beatles or their families need to necessarily sell things to a record company if a re- or, or, or even put up with the, the notion that a record company might not be interested. They want to put it out. They can get it out. Well, it depends if if they want to go the independent route. But so far, still, everything from John and George right. has been through Capital and Universal. Right. So, but if Capital and Universal were to say no, hard to imagine, probably. But if they were to say no, then they do have other options. So it's not yeah. like it's not like that would be the end of the road, you know. And and one would have thought that, especially given her normal willingness to put out new releases, particularly in you know particular signpost anniversaries and certainly the 75th anniversary of john's birth Mm. would would have been one of those signposts and for her to release for yoko to release nothing but a uh you know an lp box is uh was i would say something of a something of a disappointment Mm. which they did incorrectly well anyway Mm mm-hmm we talked about this earlier, but it could very well be because of the knowledge of the Beatles one coming out and the McCartney remasters. Maybe Yoko didn't want to put out something on John at the same time to compete yeah, with it. It's possible. Who it's knows? Possible. But um, we have heard that the one to one concerts are in the works. Right. So my guess is that it will come out next year. So um, and hopefully that will include rehearsals, which would be wonderful. How they're going to handle the the afternoon and evening shows. Will they both come out? I don't know. <laughs> that would be the ideal. And funny you should mm. mention something that should be coming out next year. Because before we go, we want to get each of each of our wish lists for 2016. Uh, for, uh, you know, a uh, some kind of release from the, you know, the Beatle, the Beatle camp and one from any one of the solo the solo camps. So why don't we, uh, once again, start with Steve. Well, group-wise, I've been hearing again that Let It Be is definitely in the cards next year. Really? So, yeah. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put Let It Be on, on the list. Um, as far as solo goes, the one-to-one thing would be fantastic. Um, but we don't know that that's going to happen. Um, we do know the George Fest is coming out, and uh, so I'll go with George Fest. Okay. Uh, Ken? One, mm-hmm. one thing, Steve, you just mentioned Let It Be. We can't just <laughs> let that go out there without saying a few words about that. You heard that's coming out before the Ron oh, no, Howard, no, no, no. the Beatles live oh, concert? No, no, I'm saying there have been rumors that Let It Be is coming out next year. Uh, there have been... There have been um, there's been uh, uh, there was an interview by somebody from Apple, um, and I won't go into details, but um, yeah, there was. Uh, it's sketchy, and it may not it may not be uh, true completely because it was done. Uh, it was not an English interview, but the inter- translation that I read seemed to indicate that it could very well happen. Now, whether it does or not is another story, but that's it, it's out there. That's the way it is. So. We'll see. Mm, okay. And of course, the, those rumors right. have been going around for oh yeah how oh, many, yeah, yeah, yeah. How right, many right, right. years now. And I'm but I'm not I'm not regurgitating the old. Mm-hmm. Rumors. This is something re- this is something recent. Mm-hmm. So okay, Ken. All right. Very quickly for John, the one to one concert. However, that's handled. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. For Paul, I'm going to say I, I I'm thinking it's probably going to come out next year as the animation film for High in the Clouds that he's been working on for several years. He's done a whole soundtrack for that, and there's even a song that he recorded with Lady Gaga. So I hope that is the the release of next year of new material. And like you said, Al, Flowers in the Dirt will come out, the, mm-hmm. the remaster for that. For George, early takes volume two. I should say takes two through 200. I'd be quite happy. If they all came out there. But, uh, you know, if just the next one came out in the series, I'd be thrilled to pieces. For Ringo, I'm thinking he'll start his new album in January. So I doubt very much that it will come out next year. He usually puts out an album every two years. But he did mention to Chris Carter on his show that uh, there may be an Apple Years box set coming out. So that would be like Sentimental Journey through Goodnight Vienna, 
So I don't really know if that's really been planned, but I would love to see that. And as far as the Beatles are concerned, uh, from all that I've heard, the Ron Howard uh, film is the next one in the pipeline there. So I'm thinking that's coming out next year. But I would love to see, obviously, let it be. But it would be nice if the live project did come out, if they could release as a companion any full Beatles concert. Mm -hmm. Whether it's the Beatles at Shea in 65, the Washington Coliseum show, which I know was available if you bought the Beatles remastered catalog in 2009. Yeah, I mean like on DVD and Mm Blu-ray. It would be nice for that to come out. Something like that. You know, any concert that's complete, I'd love to see that. So that would be my wish list. Darren, how about your wish list? All right, my wish list is for the Beatles, of course, it's, uh, you know, let it be. Let it be exists, and it can be reissued. The thing that I envision in my own feeble mind uh, would be some sort of live anthology. And if Let It Be wasn't going to come out, well, then you could take the rooftop concert. You could take the long out of print Hollywood Bowl album or maybe entire concert, plural, uh, of the Hollywood Bowl and the Washington thing and make a mega Beatles live package, multiple disc. uh, And the concerts are short, so you could probably. Excuse me, I didn't mean that was my dinner. I knew I shouldn't have eaten before, right before the show. Here we go. All right. W- what on earth was that? That is a fire station, which is just on the next block. And, what state uh, are we hearing that from? Is that Maine or Pennsylvania? Pennsylvania. Pen- Pennsylvania. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, mm. it's, uh, and it's uh, four, four blasts means that there's a fire someplace. So the volunteer uh, fire people uh, are being summoned. But uh, that's that's past now. Okay. So go this, ahead. Is the, this is the only Beatle radio show where you can hear fire signals across the country. Fire signals, trains, you name it. The next time that you have me on, I'll go in the backyard and you can listen to Interstate 87 in the background. Exactly. <laughs> anyway, uh, all right. I, I'll pick up with um, – I would like to see uh, a mega live Beatles set come out. It could be all-encompassing. Uh, you'd get the Washington concert. You could get the rooftop performance in its entirety. And that would be a way for Apple, if there is any hesitation, to put Let It Be out. Uh, well, you could at least give us the rooftop concert. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing controversial with that. Uh, get the uh, the Hollywood Bowl concerts out. In, uh, you know, um, uh, that original album and uh, flesh it out for a full performance And really, uh, I get the Shea Stadium thing in there. And because these concerts are short, you could probably fit a lot of full performances on three or four Blu-ray slash DVDs, perhaps, uh, you know, six. I'm just throwing numbers out there. Six disc set. Uh, That would be great. Uh, So I picked Let It Be as something that is reality because it does exist. I'd like to see that come out. Uh, but the thing in my mind is a big live package from the Beatles, from Apple, on Beatles material. For George, um, I'm with Ken, more archive stuff. And I, and I found uh, early tracks, Volume 1, to be very disappointing because it was so short. And there was just so much more that could have been there. So something a little more substantial from the archives on Harrison would be cool. And uh, I've... You know, think the Ringo thing uh, going back, not only just uh, Apple, I'd love to see Ringo get his entire catalog out there again, probably in like one uh, big set. Uh, I don't know where the master who belong, you know, who owns the masters to albums like Bad Boy, uh, you know, stuff like that or Old Wave. I don't know what kind of legal Mm. wrangling will have to go into something like that if you get if it has to just be. The Apple albums, I think that's actually, that's kind of, there's what, four, right? Four. Uh So, I mean, I think I would like to see Ringo, you know, I'm sure in this day and age with some uh, uh, wrestling around can get like all of his albums back under everyone's nose so they could hear that there was a lot of great stuff there. Mm -hmm. Um, And who did I leave out? Paul? You know what? It occurred to me recently, Paul does not have a 
a comprehensive compilation. Wings Greatest is dated uh, and obsolete. Uh, all the best, the same thing. Wingspan? Even Wingspan. Uh, so much more mm. could be done. So I thought, you know, what, and maybe this, unfortunately, I hate to say this, maybe this is something that somebody does posthumously, but I'm talking about a huge anthology of McCartney's entire post Beatle career uh, would be fantastic. Best of and key tracks from McCartney through to whatever right now new or whatever is, you know, that gives you a full overview of everything he did in one place. Um, That's real tough to do. <laughs> You're talking about 45 years right. of music there. Well, I think, I think when it comes to ownership, McCartney owns everything. Right. Uh, right. And I think that his, I think also because there, it's not like, it's not like, um, uh, you know, some artists will, you know, like Chicago would put out a new greatest hits album. I love Chicago. I'm not knocking them, but, they would put a new greatest hits album out every six months. It seemed like, mm. um, I think because there has been, it has been over 15 years. I think it is since wingspan. And the fact that right. you could argue, make an argument with all three of Paul's anthologies, what could have been there that some huge volume of the best of his 40 plus year work would be, uh, could be a significant, significant uh item to put out there mm -hmm. and then people will really i think a lot of people will will take a look again when they've got everything in front of them wow since the beatles look what mccartney did you know here it is all in front of us yeah. how many, yeah, how many, how many well, discs I, are I, you talking <clears throat> about, uh, darren um <laughs> well you know what is you know it, Listen, I'm I'm a huge fan of the band King Crimson, and they're putting 25 disc box sets out, uh, and I'm there buying them. So that if you, somebody like McCartney was like a 10 disc set or something like that, so be it. I think he's a talent that would deserve something huge like that. Okay, you know, if REM could put out what seven, eight, nine DVD sets, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm just curious. So okay, yeah, I'd look uh -huh. forward to that. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but please put out one edition, not seven different volumes, so that when I go to describe them on the radio, <laughs> you know, it's easy. You know, it's mm. not like you know, six different configurations. You get the vinyl, this box that comes with the eight track tapes. You know, it's all one <laughs> simple thing to describe. Wow, and, bo and, and bonus tracks. Mm. Don't forget bonus. Yeah, and bonus tracks too. I mean, they could maybe, um, you know, <laughs> I don't know. I, let me put together another twenty-five disc box set of outtakes. Yeah, exactly. But here you go. And Alan, aside from the uh, the the complete Life of the Lion sessions. <laughs> Uh, yes, there's that. <laughs> yes. What's your wish list for 20? Yeah, you know, I, most of mine have been really covered as we've gone around. Um, uh, I agree with Darren about a live box set uh, would be a great idea. And I actually have heard that um, rumored as something they were considering um, possibly before they got involved with the Ron Howard thing. Um, I'd heard that there was going to be a, uh, they were considering a set with four shows, which I think was going to include um, Sweden, Paris, um, possibly Washington Coliseum. But, you know, once you start with that, you can, there are so many actually full shows or full TV things out there with soundboard quality sound, um, good visuals. Um, they could put out, a, 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 as, as Darren said, a, a six or seven uh, Blu-ray set, you know, with, I mean, even, even Hollywood Bowl, there is footage for most of at least one of those concerts. Right. So, uh, so they could do that. Um, I'd like to see that. I'd like to see as an audio release, I'd like to see the complete Esher tapes come out. Um, oh yeah. You know, mm. uh, the full stereo recordings seem to exist in George Harrison's archives, and perhaps Danny could, you know, let those loose, and it would be great hearing them in the quality that we heard the handful of tracks on Anthology. 
Right. For John, uh, yeah, the one to one was on my list, but I was thinking that maybe Yoko, Yoko should consider something a little more expansive. I mean, John's post solo live Beatles career was, you know, very constricted. There's the one to one concerts, there's the Ann Arbor concert for John Sinclair, there was an appearance at um, the Apollo Theater in New York, really just one or two songs. Same mm-hmm. with the John Sinclair one, I think three or four songs. And TV, Sir Lou Grade. Sir Lou Grade, and there was, uh, there is footage possibly of, uh, well, there's the the Zappa footage actually uh, when they mm-hmm. the Zappa, mm. and and a few other little things, and it's such a constricted uh, body of work that I really think you could put together a John Lennon post Beatles live set um, fairly easily, and I'd like to see that rather than have it come out piecemeal. Um, I would love to see more George Harrison archival stuff. Uh, there is, from what I've heard, plenty out there. And um, I think the the first volume of Early Takes was, um, I don't say I was disappointed by it, but I think it was a sort of a teaser, you know, look what we got. Mm-hmm. Um, for Paul and Ringo, um, I don't know. I don't know that I necessarily, Paul is doing an archival thing anyway, so those things will keep coming out. I, I wish he would pack them a bit fuller than he has been, but um, mm-hmm. but those have been have been good. Um, from both of them, I think I would just like to see um, a new album each this year and um, have them be, you know, good ones. Mm-hmm. So that's that. Yeah. Mm. I hope I hope Paul puts out a new album, but uh, he usually takes three to four years okay. now between albums of new material and and the new album. His last one was 2013, mm-hmm. so uh, it could be this coming year. I have a feeling it'll be 2017, though. That's just well, my. I mean, he, he can write an album in half an hour. <laughs> yes, <this> so, <laughs> is... <laughs> so he just needs to record it. Mm-hmm. Mm. Maybe take an hour. <laughs> their second album took even <laughs> longer and i guess and how about that you wrap, that leaves me and i'm going to make it short and sweet because of the fact that for one thing we're way over time wise I, I i think i would uh i would concur with uh from the the beatles point of view uh with uh with the need for, especially if the the Ron Howard live uh, Beatles documentary does come out this year, uh, I think there should be some kind of companion audio set to uh, to kind of document uh, what the Beatles were as a live band, um, uh, both the good and the bad. So you could even throw in the uh, the you know so often reviled. Uh, uh, Tokyo Tokyo concerts, but there should be some kind of uh, of, of live set, especially if the, the Ron Howard film does uh, does come out. And uh, uh, rather than go through uh, go through each uh, each Beatle solo wise, I think I would uh, actually take my cue from Ken and from Darren, and say that there should be some kind of uh, uh, of uh, especially since Ringo is the only is the only one of the four whose uh, catalog, at least his Apple catalog, has not been uh, has not been re- remastered and reissued at at some point. Uh, I think it is high time for there to be, uh, you know, a uh, an Apple Years box set, uh, because obviously that was the peak of Ringo's post Beatles career. Okay. So, uh, so I think there should be, uh, there should be an Apple Years uh, Ringo box set. So that would be my, mm-hmm. uh, my wish uh, solo for uh, for 2015. And uh, I think actually that uh, that pretty much wraps it up. I would say. Well, then I'm gonna uh, first of all want to thank Darren DeVivo for joining us. Uh, thank you for inviting me. As always, it's a pleasure. Thank you, Darren. Thank you. Yes, yeah. thank you. No, thank, thank you, Darren. <laughs> and I hope you have a great, great 2016. Absolutely. And hope you'll uh, you'll uh, you'll keep coming by to help us out from time to time. It would be my pleasure. Just uh, just knock on my door. Okay, we sure will.
Absolutely. Uh, as a matter of fact, I should um, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you to, to let us know where, since obviously there have been some shakeups at WFUB, both on the, the, the terrestrial end and on the digital end, you might want to let us know exactly when and where people can hear you. I was hoping you'd be able to tell me that. <laughs> uh, that no. Actually, uh, no, right now uh, I can be heard on WFUV Monday night through Thursday nights at 10 p.m. till 2 in the morning the next day, obviously. And uh, also uh, Sunday nights at midnight till 2 a.m. Monday morning. That's on the terrestrial, which you can also stream in the New York City tri-state area or 90.7 FM. Our website's WFUV.org. Now, in addition to uh, those, quote unquote, regular uh, shifts, uh, I can be heard on the weekend, Saturday and Sunday on our what's what we refer to in house as our FUV music channel. That's mainly an HD2 service and streaming service. Uh, again, for those of you in the tri-state area, 90.7 FM HD2 uh, or stream FUV music at WFUV.org. And it's actually uh, me and one other guy, and we tag team through the day, Saturday and Sunday. So I won't get into the specific blocks of time you can hear me, but you have a 50-50 shot if you put the HD2 channel on of uh, catching me at some point. Uh, also, one very quick thing, by the time this airs, uh, this uh, edition of Things We Said Today, uh, I'll have already hosted uh, a special on WFUV which features the uh, seven Beatles Christmas messages. It was aired on Christmas Eve uh, at 9 p.m. on WFUV, and it is my hope that it will be archived on our website. So go, scoot around on WFUV.org and see if that's the case. Okay. Hey. And uh, Steve, where can people contact us? Well, people can contact us uh, uh, on uh, Facebook. We have actually two Facebook pages, one for the show and one uh, a group page. Um, we are also on um, Podbean. Well, that's where the show is, actually. You can find the show on Podbean, on YouTube, um, and you can tweet us at uh, things we said fab, and you can email us at things we said today radio show at gmail.com okay and ken uh ken can be heard uh every wednesday night what at least the live version uh he can be heard every wednesday night on uh every little thing and you generally have some uh some goodies to offer to people right oh that's every single week yeah the show's on uh the station wnhu uh, you can stream it at WNHU.net, Wednesday nights from 8 to 10 Eastern Standard Time. And every single show, I have Beatles trivia, I have thematic sets, I give away prizes like the new Beatles 1 CD plus DVD, um, the McCartney remaster, stuff like that. The same stuff that I, that I give away on my website, which is KenMichaelsRadio.com. So if you can listen to the live show, that's great. I also have the one-hour syndicated show, which you can hear on any number of channels that uh, also carry things we said today, like Fab Four Radio and Pure Pop Radio. And uh, I just want to mention on my website that um, by the time this airs, there'll be a new special contest where you can win a book, On the Monkeys, by Fred Velez. It's called A Little Bit Me, A Little Bit mm -hmm. You. And uh, a recent guest of ours, Kid O'Toole, I'll be doing a special contest on her book called Songs We Were Singing. Guided tours through the Beatles' lesser-known tracks right after that. So in addition to winning great prizes like all the Beatles stuff and solo Beatles stuff on my website, uh, you can also win all this other stuff on my special contest. So if you can, please visit KenMichaelsRadio.com. And Alan, anything that you need to uh, – anything to, to plug? No, I don't think so. Um you can um, write to me at Alan Cozen or Alan Cozen Remixed on Facebook or Alan Cozen at gmail.com. And uh, that's about that. May I just uh, mention, I neglected to mention my Facebook page. Uh, this is Darren uh, here. Mm -hmm. And the face, Facebook page is Darren DeVivo on 
WFUV Radio. Go to that page, not the one that's Darren DeVivo. You want the one with the FUV call letters in the name as well. And uh, like me there, and we'll chat. Let me also add my email address, beetlesexaminer at gmail.com, and I have my own Facebook page, and there's also a Beetle News and Commentary group where I post uh, stories and, and talk about uh, Beetle stuff. So sorry about that. No problem. And I can be contacted on uh, on Facebook at Al Sussman uh, and on Twitter at ASUS49, plus also through www.beetlefan.com, www.paradingpress.com. And uh, I think that that about wraps it up. Uh, it's been uh, it's been a very interesting year, and it's been a very interesting session here. And again, want to thank Darren DeBevo for joining us, yeah. and, and want to wish all of you out there uh, a very uh, happy remainder of your holiday season, and a uh, uh, hopefully a great, hopefully hopefully peaceful 2016. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, yeah. for uh, uh, for Ken Michaels, for Steve Marinucci, for Alan Cozen, and Darren DeVivo, and in, a, in a abstentia, Tom Frangione, we just want to, again, wish you folks a happy new year, and we will see you next time. Mm-hmm.